<coughs> so yesterday we started with correlation and regression. I made it clear to you that correlation basically looks at the relationship or the association that exists between variables. Whilst regression is a statistical technique that helps us to establish cause and effect between two variables. I also told you that there can be correlation between two variables, but it's possible there is no regression. There can be a relationship, but there's no cause and effect. Okay. And there can also be a relationship with cause and what effect. So the fact that there's correlation does not mean that there is, does not necessarily mean that there's cause and what an effect. <clears throat> we look at the types of relationships. We look at uh, the way relationship can be viewed. We looked at the uh, kinds of regression. We also started with regression. We looked at the correlation coefficient. We looked at how to interpret the correlation coefficient. We started with regression. I told you the kinds of regression. I told you we have simple regression. We have multiple regression. We have dummy variable regression. We have limited dependent variable regression. I give you examples of limited dependent variable regression and all that. Okay, and I explained the things you can find in a model. I also differentiated between a model and an equation all yesterday. Today, we are going to briefly look at the assumptions underlying correlation and regression. Then we'll move on to solve correlation questions and regression questions, and I'm sure we should finish. So today, if we even go to 8.30, please bear with me, because we have quite a lot to do. I am only praying that my network will favor me today so that we can move fast. So please, I also want your participation level, especially when we are solving the correlation questions. So these are the assumptions underlining uh, correlation and regression. When we talk of assumptions, we are talking of certain things that must be there for something to take place. Certain things that must be there for something to take place. That is what? Assumption. Okay, that is an assumption. So, before uh, Please, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, please. Hello, can you? Okay, so let's go on. So I'm saying that 
assumptions are certain things that must be there before something can take place. So I was given an example that if a rabbi calls me that said, please, you can join for us to start the class. <clears throat> then I assume that first of all, the Zoom meeting has been started. Secondly, students have joined before a rabbi will call me to tell me that the class has started. If the Zoom meeting hasn't been started, join. I don't think a rabbi will call me that I should join for us to start the class. So that's an example of what an assumption. So one of the assumptions is that there is what? A linear independence. Okay. There's a that is linearity. Now, when we talk of linearity, it is from the word line. Okay, straight line, a line. Okay, a line. So linearity. So Y has a linear independence, linear dependence on X. I told you that Y is a dependent variable and X is the independent variable. So we don't deal with quadratic and normal, no, uh, normality, okay? We don't follow the quadratic functions or others. We deal with what? The linear function, okay? So one of the assumptions of risk, uh, correlation and regression is linearity. linearity. Y has a linear dependence on what? On X, that is, it follows, it kind of follows a straight word, line. Okay. It follows a straight line, not a quadratic sort of, but a straight line. So that is one of the assumptions. Then we also talk of normality and homoscedasticity. Okay, normality and homoscedasticity. Now, what does this mean? This simply means that the distribution of the errors are what? Are constant. Eh? The distribution of the errors are constant. That is what this uh, assumption simply what means. Distribution of the errors are, are constant. So if I do this,
Now, if I do this, look at these diagrams. Eh? Look, at, let's take a look at these diagrams. I'm just using these diagrams to explain uh, the normality of, and homoscedasticity. Now, diagram A. This is the distribution of the errors. Diagram A. This distribution, who can tell me, does it follow a, is it constant? Does it follow a constant pattern? That is what it means. Check and see if they all follow a constant pattern. Yes. Diagram A. The first diagram, does it follow a constant pattern? This distribution of the errors, do they follow a constant pattern? Yes, who can tell me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, check this diagram. Look at this dot, 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 dot. Do they follow a constant pattern? Who can just try? Do they follow a constant pattern? Yes, sir, they are moving. Yes, it follows a constant pattern. They, they follow a constant pattern. Eh? Yes. So they are all moving where? They are, they are from left, forward. from left yeah. to right. From left to right. Yes. So that's who is talking. Who was talking? Semi Benedicta. Benedicta, thank you. So Benedicta is correct. You can see that this particular. You can draw a straight line. Huh? We can draw a straight line through it. It kind of follows a constant what? Pattern. So here we say that the thing is homo. Homo, you like homogeneous. Okay, homogeneous. They are all following the same. They are all going in the, in the, in the same way. Homo, homo means one, kind of. Okay, they are all going the same way. So this particular one is what? It's constant. How about the second diagram? The second diagram, is it constant, Janet? It's also constant. So to say that the second diagram is also constant, kind of sloping what? Downwards. See, so this one is also a constant. So homo scedasticity or normality. Now, how about the third diagram? Huh? The third diagram. The others, please. Oh, you people should come in. Hey, come in. Sir, please, no, it's not following a, a normal path. So Abinaya, why is saying that the distribution there is not constant? And you can see it. Some are going here, some are going there, some are, they are not following constant. So this is called heteroscedasticity, hetero. Okay, hetero. If that thing is not constant, then that thing is hetero. But if it is constant, then homo. Okay, so one of the assumptions is that it should be the distribution of the errors should be what constant. How about the last diagram? Yes. J. Um, sir, please, it's moving in a circular or random motion. So is it constant or not constant? Please, it's constant. So that one is also constant. So it will be homo. Okay, so that is this is just to demonstrate to you the assumption of what homo scedasticity. Okay, so that is that is it. So we are saying that the distribution of the errors, okay, should be constant. That is the errors are stochastic, and the variances are homogeneous. Okay.
they are homogeneous. Now, another uh, assumption is what we call no autocorrelation. Okay, no auto what? Correlation. So they don't, they shouldn't, the errors shouldn't correlate automatically. So we are saying that the errors are independent of each other. The errors should be what? Independent of each other. Or what? Also go now. Okay. The errors should be independent of each other. Then the last one is no high multicollinearity. No high multicollinearity. Now, when we talk of multicollinearity, what does it mean? What is the meaning of multicollinearity? Multicollinearity is the relationship that exists between independent variables. Okay, here we are considering what? Multiple regression. And yesterday I told you that for a multiple regression, we have one dynamic or metric dependent variable at the left hand side. And we are saying that that particular dynamic dependent variable is being affected or depends on a lot of what? independent variables okay independent variables so here if this we are saying that wage which is the dependent variable depends on this at model okay so, what regression? Please, can you hear me? Your line is breaking. Yes. So, what we are looking at, we are looking at the relationship between the dependent variable and the independent variable. That is our focus. Okay, that is our focus. Our focus is on the dependent variable and the independent variable. So you are looking at the relationship. However, there also exists relationship between what? The independent variables that we are looking at. There also exist relationship between them. So the education and experience position and ability, they are also correlated or they may also be correlated in a way. But that is what our focus. So we are saying that no, talk, no high multicollinearity means that the independent variables that we are using, they shouldn't be highly correlated. Do you know why? Because if the independent variables are highly correlated, they to have the same effect on weight on the dependent variable. Okay, if the independent variables are highly correlated, they tend to have the same effect on the word. Why keep the two if they are having the same effect? So one of the assumptions is that there shouldn't be what high multicollinearity. It means there shouldn't exist high relationships or strong relationships between the independent variables. Okay, then it's acceptable to be what to be uh, related, but the relationship between them shouldn't be high. That's the meaning of what? No high multi word collinearity. Okay, no high multi word collinearity. So the relationship between the independent variables shouldn't be what? High. They shouldn't be as strong. Do you understand it? Yeah, yes, please. So, Okay. Now let's move on. Now, let me explain what a dummy, yesterday we started, we looked at dummy variables regression. I told you that one of the kinds of regression is what? Dummy variation. And I explained what a dummy variable is, isn't it? 
Isn't it? Yes, it is. So in a nutshell, what will you say is a dummy variable? You can tell me. Using these two words, what will you say is a dummy variable? Yes. Hello. Hello. The same. Hello. Okay. Um, please, sir, a dummy variable is an unresponsive or static variable introduced into the model.
still make me co-host eh? can you hear me okay thank you so let's proceed i hope I, you can hear me yes sir okay so i said what to say a, a dummy variable yes who can tell me jay you are on the floor um yes please i said it's an unresponsive or static variable so between the two uh, types of variables, which one is the dummy variable? Yes, it's not the question is only, not only to G, all of us. Between the two types of variables that we have, which one is a dummy variable? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. yes, sir. Do you know the types of variables? Do you know the types of variables? Aram? Categorical. The categorical is a dummy variable. That's all I'm expecting. So a dummy variable is a categorical variable. So you are saying that a dummy variable is a categorical independent variables with two levels. Okay. It's a dummy. A dummy variable is a categorical independent variable with two levels. Now, sometimes the dummy variable has more than two levels. I told you yesterday that regression is a quantitative tool. So once regression is a quantitative tool, then it must use or it should use what? quantitative variables, quantitative independent variables, or independent variables that are metric or dynamic. Those are quantitative. Independent variables that are relevant to the research or that are relevant or that affect the dependent variables. Some of them are categorical variables. So how do we bring them into the research? How do we bring them in a numerical tool? How do we do them? Okay, how do we bring them into the research? How do we bring them into the regression? We are saying that we make them a binary variable. So the categorical independent variables that we will introduce into the regression will be made a, 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 a binary variable. When we say something is binary, it means that it's, it uses zeros and ones. Okay, zeros and ones, it's binary. Okay, binary. So this is how we do it. To bring the variable into the model, always look at the levels for the, that, that particular variable and bring the levels less than one into the regression model. Okay, bring the levels less than one Less one, not less than one. Less one into the model. So if the levels are two, you will let you will take one from it and bring only one into the regression model. If the levels are three, only two will come into the model. Hmm? If the levels are three. Only two will come into the model. If the levels are four, three will come into the model. One of the levels will be left out. That is how to bring in the word, the categorical independent variable into the regression model. So for example, if we are saying that GPA depends on what? Gender. 
How many levels have gender? Who can tell me? How many levels have gender? Two. 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 So, so how many will come into the model? One. One. And the one that you will bring into the model will be represented with one. The one that will not come will be zero. That is what it means. Okay. The old member model will be represented with one. The one that will be left out will be zero. So if I have four levels, how many will come into the model? Three. Three. All the three that will come will, will be represented with one, one, one. The one that will be left out will be represented with what? Zero. So for example, I say that your GPA depends on the core uh, on, the, on, the, on your on your uh, major course major, and then I we mentioned the course major, accounting, finance, insurance, HR, marketing. So we have five. How many will come into the model? Four. Four. So let's say we'll bring in finance, we'll bring in marketing, we'll bring in HR, we'll bring in uh, accounting. The last one that will not bring in will be represented with zero. All the four that you will bring will be represented one, one, one. So we introduce categorical independent variables into the regression model using what? Binary data, because I told you regression is what? It's a, start, uh, it's a quantitative tool. So then when you are bringing the categorical variable into there, you have to also code them. So you code them as zeros and ones so that it will be numbers in the model. Okay, so that it will be numbers in the model. So that is a dummy variable regression. A dummy variable regression. Janet, your hand was up. Are you okay? No, sir. No, I can see that, like I said, if the, if the levels are more than two, and then you subtract one from it, mm -hmm. and with the gender, um, we said two. So, so you still need to subtract the one from it. Yes. If two levels exist, so crapo, you only bring one into the model. So this is how you write it. Uh, you say uh, where one is male or zero otherwise. So the zero otherwise will represent if the person is not male, then the person is what? Female. Female. So that female will not come into the model, but only the male will come into the model. Because if you multiply male by one, you get male. If you multiply female by zero, what will you get? Zero. Zero, and it will not come into the model. Thank you. Yes. So for categorical independent variables, when you are bringing them into the model, their coefficient will be one, 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 one pair. See, the coefficient you have here, no? Eh? Look at this. That's, I told you I yesterday, I differentiated between the uh, beta parameter, uh, I differentiated between a model and I hope you still remember. So for, for dummy variables, their coefficient will only be one, 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 one. The one that will not come, its coefficient is zero. And if you multiply that by zero, you get zero. That's why we don't bring it to the model. Do you understand? Yes. Sure. So, Look at this. For example, we are saying that return on assets depends on profit, depends on the type of firm, and depends on what? Assets. Okay. 
Okay, sorry, the quote. Depends on profit, depends on the type, and depends on what? Assets. Now, the type that we are looking, profit, okay, is profit a numerical variable or categorical variable? Who can tell me? Categorical. Profit is categorical variable. Yes, yeah, talk. Is profit a numerical or categorical variable? Numerical. Is profit a numerical variable? Is profit numerical or categorical? Uh -huh. Hey, you guys, come on. Profit, when we say you have made the profit of is it numerical variable or categorical variable? Numerical. Numerical. It's numerical. So this one cannot be a dummy variable. Now, type. The type of something. Is it numerical or categorical? Categorical. That is categorical. So once it is categorical and it has come into the model, then it will be a dummy variable. So the types, you know, they are saying that where type is one, if they, so the, here the types are two, domestic type and foreign type. Okay, domestic type and what? Foreign what? Type. So they are saying that where type is one, if the firm is domestic, or zero if the firm is what foreign. So where if you are doing the same and they give you type and type is one and the type is domestic, it means that you bring one here as type. What I said that the coefficient to be one, that one is not. Uh, I mean, I meant that bringing in uh, that particular level will be one, not the coefficient, please. Okay, not the coefficient. So I'm saying that they said that where type is one, if the firm is what? Domestic or zero, if what? Foreign. So if you are answering and they tell you that oh, the firm is a domestic firm, then you make sure that Domestic is one, so one will be here. You say, oh, uh, if the firm is what? Foreign, then you know that zero is foreign, so zero will be here. Okay, so the same way they say gender, 30 gender. Gender, let's say, where uh, male is one. Okay, if where gender is one, if the person is a male, or two, if the person is what a female. Mm -hmm. So this is what a dummy variable. Then assets is what assets. Is it particular? Or numerical. Here yeah, at the value of assets, we are not looking at the names of assets. So the value. So it is what numerical. Okay, numerical. Let me teach you something.
Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. You can hear you. Good. Now we are going to look at interpretation of coefficients. Interpretation coefficients. First of all, you must know that the way we interpret the coefficient of a numerical variable is different from the way we interpret the coefficient of a categorical variable. So anytime you are asked to interpret the coefficient of a particular variable, then you have to check, is that particular variable a numerical variable or a dummy variable? So what's the coefficient of profit? 20. So the here it says interpret the coefficient of profit, assets and type. So first of all, is profit a numerical variable or a categorical variable? America. So how do we interpret numerical variables? You would say that on the average, so you start with on average, then you mentioned the dependent variable. Okay, so if I should interpret the coefficient of the profit here, I will say that on the average, return on asset will, now check the sign that comes before the coefficient. If the sign that comes before the coefficient is positive, it tells you that there's a positive relationship between the dependent variable and that independent variable. Okay, if the sign that comes before the coefficient is positive, then there is what? A positive relationship between the dependent variable and that particular word, independent variable. So if there is a positive relationship, it means they move in the opposite direction, right? If there's a positive relationship, it means they move in the opposite direction, right? No, sir. No, please. Rather, the same direction. The same direction. The same direction. So if profit should increase, what will it happen to ROA? It will also increase. And if profit should decrease, what will happen to ROA? It will also decrease. Good. So if it, but the question is, it will increase by, ROA will increase by how much? It will increase by the coefficient. I yesterday I told you that to what extent does the independent variable affect or by how much does the independent variable affect the dependent variable? It is through the measure of the word, the coefficient. So this one simply means that if profit should go up by one, ROA will go up by one, 20. That's what it simply means. Okay, if profit should go up by one, ROA will go up by 20 because there is a positive relationship. So you will say that on the average, return on assets will increase by 20 CDs or whatever. If profit increases by one unit, that's all. Okay, let me type it so that. So on the average, sometimes people would like to add holding all other factors constant. Okay, 
Let me add that side. So on the average, holding all other factors constant. Okay, on the average, holding all other factors constant, return on assets will increase by 20 if profit increases by one unit. This is the interpretation for the coefficient of profit. Now, who can help me with the interpretation for the coefficient of assets? Who can help me with the interpretation for the coefficient of assets following what I have just done? Mm -hmm. Who will help me? So first of all, assets, you know, is it a numerical or categorical variable? Asset mm. is numerical. numerical. No. So help me. Mm. Who will help me? Yeah. So Asantua. Wow. Well, so on the average, R O A A oh, holding all other things constant. All other factors. All other factors constant. ROA will increase by five if assets increase by one unit. If asset increases by one unit, that's all. Okay, that's all. Now, that is how to interpret what? A numerical variable. What of dummy variable? Now, dummy variable, we don't use increase and decrease. Now, I will use more or less. And you use more or greater. You use greater or less. You use more or greater if the sign is positive. OK? You use more or greater if the sign is positive. And you use less if the sign is negative. That's all. So more or greater goes with what? Positive. Whilst less goes with what? Negative. So for that one, you don't use increase and decrease. You use more or less. So you will say that on average, ROA will be, then here, the sign is positive. So it will be 30 units more. Okay? Will be 30 units more. When the firm is bring the, uh, the, the, the level that was represented with one day, the level that was represented with one, no, Fabra. So, here yeah, the level that was represented with one is domestic. So, on the average, ROA will be 30 units more or greater when the firm is domestic than foreign. Okay, you can say on the average, holding all other factors constant, ROA will be 30 units more or will be 30 units greater when the firm is what? Domestic than foreign. That's all. Okay, when the firm is what? Domestic than foreign. We'll do more examples as we move on. Okay. But who can interpret um, sir, please, can you type what you just said? Like the other one. Uh, we we'll spell it. Which one can't you spell it?
So this is it. So on the average, holding all else constant, ROA will be 30 units more or greater. Use one of them when the firm is domestic than foreign. That's all. Yo, who can interpret the coefficient of experience for me? Interpret the coefficient of experience for me. Yes. Who, 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 who will help? Can you hear me? How much should you interpret the coefficient of experience? Experience for me. Mm -hmm. Janet. Okay. So on the average, holding all other factors constant, which will increase by 2.4. If experience increases by one unit. That is all. Eh? That is all. So let's move on. So we now know how to interpret coefficients. Now, I wanted to teach you how to do uh, correlation with Excel, but it will take time. Okay, I'm sure. The lecturer will walk you through that. So I will teach you how to answer correlation questions because basically in exams, that is what we'll be doing. So someone should read this question for us. Look at the ventures. No. I won't do look at the ventures. Okay. We put there. This one is here. So let me do tutorial set rather. So someone should read this for us. Yes, read for us. The UN wants to determine if child mortality, that is the number of deaths of children under age five in a year per thousand live births, is related with the per capita GNP P and the total fertility rate TFR. That is the average and collects a sample of data from some selected countries and performs both correlation and regression analysis to establish association and casualty. Causality. 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 Sorry. Use the correlation matrix to answer the questions that follow. Yo, thank you. So this thing. Surely you will find it in an examination. So this is called correlation matrix. And that is what I wanted to teach you with Excel, but I realized to take so much time. So I will skip it. I'm sure they'll teach you in class if, or you can, I don't know, but let's learn how to answer questions from it. So there's the correlation matrix. So from the matrix, who can, or from what was read, who can tell me how many variables are here from, from the question? How many variables do we have? How many variables? Yes. How many variables? Four. How many? Four. Four. Yeah. Which one? 
is a dependent. And which ones are they dependent? Um, sir, please, the child mortality is dependent and then female mm -hmm. literacy rate per capita and fatality, total fatality rate are independent variables. Yo. Now, what about we won't? What are combat won't? Do you know how to play Mortal Kombat? The one who just spoke? Not really, sir. So why are you, instead of mentioning fertility, you are using fatality. As if, sir, you are using, you, are, you, you know how to play Mortal Kombat. Yo, let's move on. That was just by the way. So he's right. Child mortality is a dependent variable. The others are the independent variable. So on a correlation matrix, the first variable is always a dependent variable. Okay. The first variable is always a dependent variable. All other variables after that are all independent variables. That is it. So what you see here are the correlation coefficients. That is what we we, we looked at yesterday. Yesterday, I talked to you about correlation coefficient. I told you that the correlation coefficient is a statistic that quantifies the relationship between variables. So these are all correlation coefficients. So we are to use this matrix to answer these questions. So we are going to learn how to do that. So A question A says what? Oh, the one who was reading, read for me. Hey, which two pairs of variables are mostly strongly correlated with the outcome variable? Which two pairs of variables are mostly strongly correlated with the outcome variable? Now, which one is the outcome variable? So the dependent variable. So which one? The child mortality. The child mortality is the outcome variable. So you see that they didn't mention dependent variable, but they have mentioned outcome. So you must know what outcome variable is. Yesterday, I gave you the various names. I gave you the various names. I didn't give it to you for joke. So if you want, if you, uh, you can set a question. Okay, they say which two pairs of variable are mostly strongly correlated with the outcome variable. So your focus is on the relationship with the other variables or the relationship between the other variables and the outcome variable. So you only search your answer from here, from this column. You only search your answer from the outcome variable column. Okay, you only search your answer and outcome from the outcome variable column. So you look for the highest numbers there apart from the one. Because yesterday I told you that if the correlation coefficient is one, then there is what? Then there's a strong relationship, right? Yes, sir. If the correlation coefficient is one, then there's a strong relationship, right? Yes, sir. There's what? A perfect relationship. There's a perfect relationship. But here they said strongly. So you, you leave one out. So which two pairs of variable are mostly strongly correlated with the outcome variable? So you go through here, which of them has the highest number? Who can tell me? Yes. Janet. Negative 0 0.82. Negative 0 0.82. Thank you. Yesterday, I told you that don't attach morality to the strong, uh, to the positive and the negative. The positive simply shows positive relationship. 
And negative shows negative relationship. If you want strong, the strength, use the absolute value. And using the absolute value, 0 0.82 is the high. So this is how you write it. So the first pair, so that's 0 0.82. It is between what? F and what? CM. So F and CM. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, so let's continue with what we're doing. So the first one was what? CM and F. They put in like a negative 0 0.82. Uh -huh. What will be the next one? Yes, just look into it and say it. Don't raise your hand. Yes. 0.67. So it's between what? CFR and CM. So CM and what? CFR. They put it in bracket. So that two, we are zero point six seven. Thank you. Two, we are Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, next. The one we. Which three pairs of variables are mostly multicollinear? So, which three pairs of variables are mostly multicollinear? Do you understand multicollinear? Yes, do you understand multicollinear? No, sir. You understand multicollinear? Yes, sir. What is multicollinear? Or multicollinearity? The relationship between independent areas. Exactly. So we are looking at the relationship between independent variables. So for such a question, you look for your answers under the independent variables column. Don't go to the dependent variable side. Because relationship between independent and dependent variable is not multicollinearity. Multicollinearity is relationship between independent variables only. So from here, we look for our answers from this side. From this side. FP and TFR side. So strongly, mostly multicollinear means they're strong. So you arrange them in what? Descending what? 
order. So what's the highest? Yes, the first one, the highest. Mm. Negative 0 0.63. So it's between what and what? C, F, R, and F. So pick from the top to the side. So F and what? C, F, R. F and C, F, R. Negative 0 0.63. Then the next one. 0 0.27. Between? F and P. So F and P. 0 0.27. Then the la next one, the last one. Pardon? 0 0.19, negative 0 0.19. Between what and what? P and TFR. And TFR. So P and TFR. Negative 0 0.19. That's all. Next question. Identify three pairs of variables that are least correlated. So, three pairs of variables that are least correlated. So, this one is not respect to dependent or you are looking for it everywhere. Three pairs of variables that are least correlated, meaning that ascending order. Least correlated, ascending order. So, the most least. So if we have something like that, a word like that. <laughs> so ascending what? Order. Yes. So let's start. Which one? Which one? P and T F R. P and T F R. Oh, the rest. You are not uh, encouraged. Me cry. Oh, it's not nice. So it's not nice. So P and TFR negative 0 0.19. Yes, the next one is what? 0 0.27. That is F and P. F and P. The next one. F and TFR, negative 0 0.63. I'm sorry. CMMP. CMMP. Yes, 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 it's true, sorry. So CMMP is negative 0 0.41. As okay, next. Which pairs of variables show no correlation? Which pairs of variables show no correlation? How do you identify no correlation? Who can tell me? How do you identify no correlation? Yesterday I taught you. Yes. Um, sir, please, if R is equal to zero. So when the correlation coefficient is zero, so to show no correlation, look for 0, 0.00 from the matrix. Is there any 0, 0.00 there? Eh? No. no, no, so the answer is none. 
Ah, size. Nah. Let's move on. Next. From the matrix, pick point two very good predictors. What, what are predictors? Yesterday I told what predictors are. Mm -hmm. They are odd. Yes, predictors are independent variables. That's very good. So if they say pinpoint two very good predictors, you have to choose the independent variables that have high relationship with the dependent variable. Okay, predictors, good predictors are independent variables with high correlation with the dependent, or that has high correlation with the dependent variable. So give me the independent variable that has the highest correlation with the dependent variable in this question. Uh -huh. The independent variable that has the highest correlation with the dependent variable. Do you understand the question? No. What are the independent variables in this question? F, K, N, P, and T, F, R. So, looking at the relationship between these variables you have mentioned and the dependent variable, which one has the highest relationship with the dependent variable? F. F. Because if you look at CM and F, F, yeah, that's how it will be F. So you put it to bracket, negative 0 0.182. So this is not a pair. This one is just the variable, negative 0 0.82. Followed by CFR. Please explain the part for me. I don't understand. The part, we had, the part we had the negative 0 0.82. Please kindly explain it for me. Come over again for me, please. They said we should pinpoint two very good predictors. I said that predictors are the same as independent variable. So when we say an independent variable is a good predictor, it means that it has a high relationship with a dependent variable. Okay. So Look at the column between the dependent variable and the independent variables and choose the highest numbers from there. And look okay, at the okay. variable they are related with two. That's all. So okay, two. Thank you, sir. So F and TFR. Now the last question. Which three pairs of variables are perfectly correlated? How do you know that variables F, F Two, two variables are perfectly correlated. How do you know? When is it? When are when, when what? R is equal to one. So when the correlation coefficient is one. So here you are choosing for your answers from the one, one, one column. So you can choose. So we have CM and CM. We have F and F. We have P and P. So we put maybe we put that this one. So one point zero zero. One point zero zero. One point zero zero. Now the the end. You can it end like this, so, so you can write C M. Uh, you can write like this and C M. So in examination, you can write it like this. If you 
But if you can do the sign to find, but you can write like this. CM and CM. One point zero zero. Any question on this? Any no. So let's solve another one. Okay, read. Question two. The university secretary wants to determine how grade point average GPA, highest being 4.0, of a sample of students from a large university college depends on their high school GPA, HS, age of a student, A, achievement test score, AS, Average number of lectures skipped each week is gender of a student, where n is equal to one if a student is male or zero otherwise. Computer or PC ownership of a student, where PC is equal to one if a student owns a computer or zero otherwise. Means of transport to school, drive, bicycle, or walk, where D is equal to one if a student tries to campus or zero otherwise. B is equal to one if a student bicycles to campus or zero otherwise. Subject major of the student, finance, human resource, marketing and accounting, where F is equal to one if a student majors in finance or zero otherwise. Yeah, did you say something? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. These few days, me, I'm not enjoying the class with you guys, so seriously. Because only one person is contributing, not two people. The rest, my D, you don't talk nothing. Please read for us. Should I start again? Yes. Are you finished reading them? Yeah, I didn't hear anything. No. So please start again. The university secretary wants to determine how grade point average GPA highest being 4.0 of a sample of students from a large university college depends on their high school GPA, HS, age of students, A, achievement test score, AS, average number of lectures skipped each week, S, gender of a student, where M is equal to one if a student is male or zero otherwise, computer or PC ownership of a student, where PC is equal to one if a student owns a computer or zero otherwise, means of transport to school, drive, bicycle or walk, where D is equal to one if a student drives to campus or zero otherwise, B is equal to one if a student bicycles to campus or zero otherwise. Subject major of finance, human resource, marketing and accounting, where F is equal to one if a student majors in finance or zero otherwise. HR is equal to one if a student majors in human resource or zero otherwise. MR is equal to one if a student majors in marketing or zero otherwise. Use the correlation matrix and dummy regression outputs from R software to answer the question. Okay, 
Yo, thank you very much. So how many variables are here? Oh. How many? Twelve. 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 Which one is a dependent? GPA. GP. GPA is a dependent. And all others are what? Independent. Now among the independent, we have high school GPA. High school GPA, is it categorical, variable, or time variable? High school GPA, is it categorical or numerical? Sorry. Numerical. It's what? Numerical. Numerical. Age, categorical or numerical? Numerical. Numerical. It, uh, achievement test score, categorical or numerical? Numerical. numerical. Average number of letters in, categorical or numerical? Numerical. Numerical. Gender of the student. Categorical or numerical? Categorical. categorical. So because it is categorical, it will be made which variable? Dummy variable. Dummy. So the gender, we have what? Male and what? Female. But how many was brought into the model? Or how many should come? One. 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 One should come into the model, and that is male. So the female was left out. So they say that the one that will come into the model no, will be represented with one. So they said gender of the student, where M is equal to one if a student is male or zero one otherwise. So the zero otherwise simply stands for what? A female. Now PC ownership, you own a computer. Is it categorical or numerical? Categorical. It's categorical because the answer would be yes. They didn't say how many pieces, yes or no. So you are saying that where PC is one if the student owns a computer or zero otherwise. Means of transport to school, how many levels in this question? Three. Three, Three. levels. How many will come into the model? Two. 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 So they brought what? Drive. So I said, where D is equal to one, if a student drives to campus, or zero, zero otherwise. Yeah. And bicycle is equal to one, if a student bicycles to campus, or zero otherwise. So the otherwise represents what? Walk. Walk. <clears throat> Subject major of the student, how many levels? Five. Five. Sorry, four. Or four. Four. One, two, so how many four. will come into the model? Three. Three. So they brought finance, HR, and market. So accounting is the other ones. So you now understand the dummy variable. Now use the correlation matrix from our software to answer the question below. So first question. Mm -hmm. Read for us. First question says what? From the matrix, identify two potentially good predictors. Yo, so let's identify two potentially good predictors. What are they? Tell me so that I'll, I'll just type them. Uh huh. We just did one up there. And all of you should get involved. Yes, identify two very good predictors. The negative 0 0.26. Yeah. Negative 0 0.26. That's the highest you found. No, we have 0 0.41. 0 0.41. HS. 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 Yeah. 0 0.41. So this one, eh, you have to really take your time. It is easy to score your marks and easy to lose all your marks. 
kunya we threat to say, Mia, you will fail. You have to get patient and look for them. Yo, so HS. And then what else? What's that? They said two, eh? So what's the last one? So we have negative 0.49. Negative zero point four nine. Where is that? Mm -hmm. Do you understand that's, a good predictor? We have that's independent variable. Predictor, you are looking at the independent variable, the relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable. Mm -hmm. So you are looking for the answers only here, that's only from this column. PPO column. Okay. Please follow what we've been doing. Follow what we've been doing. Why you doing? You are not asking questions. You are not contributing. So the next one will be what? Negative. Negative zero point two six. That is for what? S. S. So that's it. That's why. Okay, so that is it. So That's the it. S is negative zero point two six. Ah, negative. Sorry. Thank you. Next question. Identify three pairs of variables that are mostly multicollinear. So multicollinearity, you know it. The relationship between what? Dependent and independent, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. I'm going to say yes. Dependent and independent. Independent variable and independent. So it's not between dependent and independent. It's between the independent variables only. So you're looking for your answers from under the independent variables column. So what's the highest? Mostly what's going in the highest? Yes, what's the highest? 0.35. Your time and you it. Take your time. If you don't take your time, you may lose your ass. <laughs> you take your time. I'm telling you, to take your yeah. time. A and H are negative zero point four nine. Take your time. Take your time. Else you lose all your mass. This um, topic is uh, 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 very easy to lose all your Negative 0 0.79. So negative 0 0.79. MR. It's with you what? HR and Take it from the top against the side. Okay, mm. top against the side. So it means that there's a high correlation between HR and MR. Negative 0 0.79. Next. So it's, it should be in descending order. All right. Don't look for it haphazardly. Look for it color by color. Okay, look for them column by column so that you don't make a mistake. Yes, what's the next one? Negative So between what and what? A S N A and H R. A and H R. A and H R.
Then the last one. Mm -hmm. Last one, last one, last one. Be between B and B. Negative 0 0.38. Between B and B. So negative 0 0.38. Okay. So D and B. And and B. B. Yo, thank you. Sir, please have a question. Ask. Sir, please can um it can there be a situation where the um the same value of a coefficient would appear more than once? Yes. Sir, so in that there case, can be situations um, like that. But we will address it. Okay. Next. Which two pairs of variables are least correlated? With the regression, with the regression. Huh? So, we will not go with me. Regress and which two pairs so of are least correlated with the regression? So, what is the regression? The dependent variable. It's the dependent variable. So, with the dependent variable. So, why will you look for your answer? GP under the dependent variable column. Pay. Don't go anywhere. So if they say with something, look for it under that something. Yes. So what's the first one? So least correlated ascending order. Yes. What's the first one? Negative 0 0.02. Yo, the first one is negative 0 0.02. So that is what? TPNA. The TPNA. Oh, it's a second one. This is not the name of the people who are not being in the army, sir. The next one. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Yes, sir. The next one. The next one. Least correlated. Yes. Please, let's be fast. The time is going. We are spending so much time. Minus 0 0.08. 0 0.08. Yes. And then, yeah, as many as. They are about four. And so how many pairs do we need? They said, the question itself says what? How many? Three, eh? Yes. Yes, three pairs. So take two, two from them and add it. So GPA and 0.08. Don't, don't skip until you go to the next one. Make sure you exhaust all the 0 0.08. So there's another 0 0.08, GPNF. So the one who was asking the question that when the same value of correlation coefficient appears plenty times, how do you deal with them? It's your question answered. Yes, Good. So if there were four, for example, like we, we have to exhaust all the 0 0.08, we have to exhaust all of them before we, we can proceed to another number. But the question says three, so we are done. It, it, it even says two. 
should not just say we will delete one. Yes, next question. Identify three pairs of variables that are most strongly correlated with achievement score of a student. So most strongly correlated with something, with what? Achievement score. So where do you look for your answers? Along AS. So you look for your answers under the AS column pair. Because it's with that. So with the dependent variable under the dependent variable, with another thing under that thing only. So let's start. What's the highest? Uh -huh. Negative 0 0.20. So that is? ASNT. ASNT. Yes, next one. 0 0.18. ASN. Uh -huh. M. Is that two or three? Okay. Okay, the last one. A S N F zero point one eight. Okay, so there's another zero point one eight. So, Jay. I'm um, sorry, please. I have a question. With the part C, is that which two pairs of variables are least correlated with the regression? Yes. And then, sir, please, um, kindly scroll up to the GPA column. Um, after choosing the GPA and A, which is negative 0 0.02. Mm -hmm. We could pick um negative zero point zero eight, which was yes. in the which was GPA and M, but M. we didn't mm -hmm. add it. No, they said two. If you cry, I have brought three. They said two, so it should be two. Pe mm -hmm. I say, uh, okay, be. but the one volume must be negative zero point zero eight before we could have picked the positive. 0.08. Jay, you are still attaching morality to positive and negative in this sense. The negative 0 0.08 does not mean that it is less than the positive 0 0.08. I told you yesterday that the negative and the positive just shows positive and negative relationship. If you want the strength, use the absolute value. So negative 0 0.08 and positive 0 0.08 in correlation and regression has the same strength, except that one is a negative relationship and one is a positive relationship. But the strength is the same, 0 0.08. Are you OK? Um, but I said, please, when we were picking the GPNA, we could add the negative sign to it. That's what I want to say. GPNA. GP and A is already negative. So that one there. Yeah, there's only when we come down, the GP and M, the M value was also negative. The negative was also at high, but we didn't bring it uh, down. No, I have not picked GP and M. Okay, so that's why I'm asking, say, why we should have picked that one right oh, after the GP and A. It's not necessary. I, it's not a necessity that I should pick that one. You can decide to pick that one, fine. I can also decide to pick the one, these other ones. There's no problem. They are all having the same strength. So if you decide to go with GP and M, fair enough. If I also go with GP and B or GP and F or GP and HR, it's the same you get your correct answer. 
So don't use the negative to say uh, to, to think that that one is less than the positive. No. The absolute value is what we use to measure the strength. The negative and the positive simply tells us that there's a positive relationship between this and this, and there's a negative relationship between this and this. That's all. Thank you, sir. I'm okay. You're welcome. So we are done. E. Oh, who is reading for me? The one who is reading. E. Using the scatter plot matrix below is the correlation between GPA and HS, GPA and AS, GPA and S, positive, negative, or neutral. No, so this is the scatter plot matrix. It's also called a scatter plot diagram matrix. The first is between GP and HS. So this is GP. This is GP. This is HS. If you should draw a box, which scatter plot diagram? They meet here or here. So you can study any of these diagrams. Can you hear me? Um, Come again. Hello. Hello, sir. Can you hear me now? Yes, please. Yes, sir. No, can you? So I'm saying that we are to study the scatter plot matrix to determine the whether there is a positive, negative, or neutral relationship between GPN and some independent variables. So the first one is GPN HS. So this is GPA. This is HS. If you should put a box. Where do they meet at? They meet here or here. So you study any of these diagrams. Okay. To study any of these diagrams. Now, how do you know that that thing is a positive relationship? If you study the diagram and they are kind of sloping upwards, okay? They are kind of stropping upwards. That tells you that there's a positive relationship. You study the diagram and you think that they are kind of sloping downwards. Then there's a negative relationship. If you study the diagram, and they are kind of sloping straight like this, horizontal. Then there is a neutral relationship. You, are, you get my point? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. So let's study the diagram between HS and GPA. This, this or this. What do you think? Is it positive, negative, or neutral? What do you think? Make us positive. Who is saying it's positive? You can't see your screen. 
Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes, please. Yes. So what do you think? Positive. Positive, positive. relationship, yes. You all agree? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, so GP and HS is positive. So you write it. GPA and HS, it's back at positive. Now, GP and AS. I'm also quite holding. So the diagrams are confusing. <laughs> and then the next way you see it, which is in... <laughs> I'm not enjoying the class at all. Now I'm just sending my friend in James. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Okay, so let's tell you the diagrams. What do you think? Yes, this diagram. What do you think? Positive or negative or neutral? Uh -huh. I think it's neutral. You think it's neutral, eh? What do you, what the others, what do you... I also think it's neutral. You also think it's neutral. <laughs> the others, what do you think? Um, please, how did you read it? Because I can't trace where um, the GPA graph is and the H3. So here or here. Okay. Yes, positive negative it's or neutral. neutral. It's neutral. You also think it's neutral, eh? Yes. Yo, last person. Who would that be? So I it's neutral. You also think it's neutral? Yes, please. Oh, then it's neutral. Why are you thinking that it's neutral? Look at this. Look at this line. Look at this particular dots. Look at these dots. Like at it's dots. going straight. Straight where? Straight in your apple. <laughs> up straight. Up straight. So if you say straight, uh, which straight are you talking about? So the diagrams are not very clear. <laughs> so should I, should I zoom? Okay, let me zoom this. Let me zoom this. this. Look at this. Look at this. Check. Check. Is this neutral? Um, sir, please, when you trace it to the left side too, that one is more or less like neutral. The left one. Left side. Yeah. Yeah. The other diagram be the AS diagram. Which one? This one is yeah, the upper one. The, the, down, the down one. The, the down AS one. diagram. Yes. And they are all see, see. This is it, eh? This is it. Look at this, look at this, look at this. look at these lines, look at these dots. I think boy, I think horizontal. If you should connect a line to them, is it horizontal? Look at this. Look at this. Are they horizontal? We have outliers. 
don't focus on the outliers. Look at where they are concentrated and look at their destiny. Eh? Look at it. Okay, so, are, so it's positive. Eh? That is positive. It's moving up forward. So stick the thing well. Don't look at the outliers. We have outliers, some who are, who are, who are some, old. but look at where they are concentrated and try to make a line and see if the line will be straight. Uh, if the line will slope upwards, horizontal, or downwards. So there's a positive relationship. And the last S. GPA and S. So if we should connect them. They will meet here or here. Here and here. What do you think? Mm. What's the meet on it? They are more neutral. <laughs> they are more neutral. <laughs> Mm, for the left one, when we consider the left diagram, the one at the left, yeah. the, the lines are horizontal, so I think neutral. Yeah. That is what you think. The neutral. What do you think is neutral? I think it's negative. Yes, I think it's negative too. That's what I was thinking. At this. Look at this. If you should connect a line through this. Hmm? They are not going to the future. It's negative. The one that try and connect a line from here. Just look at this one. So look at look at state holistically. Don't look at one particular line. Bit. Look at the whole thing holistically. Mm -hmm. So it's negative. If you can't see what the diagram is telling you, that's my, my point. You can't watch that. Just go to the matrix. And those, can you hear me? Those particular yes. variables that I've mentioned. So GP and HS, no. First one is GP and HS. Check, check from the matrix, correlation matrix. GP and HS, check. It's positive or negative, that's all. Understand it? Yes. Yeah. So GP and HS, it is positive zero point four one. So it tells that the relationship between GP and HS is positive. GP and AS positive. It's also positive. Positive zero point two one. GP and S is negative. The negative relationship. This is it. Okay. Yeah, please, your line is breaking. Please, is it okay? Okay. It's still breaking. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's do the last one. Say question. 
So please, can we see what the negative, uh, the neutral scatter plot looks like? Oh, I demonstrated it. The stroke was on. No, say with in this particular question, is there a neutral one in this question? No, there's no neutral. Neutral is there's no neutral. All of them, there's a reason. Yes, sir. Let's go. Last, let's do the last question. Question three. Let's do question three as our last. There are question four and question five. You can go and do that on your own. So let's do the. Yes. Sir, please, the question is not showing. Okay, read. A group of researchers want to predict life satisfaction score, LS, of some students seven years after university. The outcome variable is associated with certain factors when the student was in the university. It is believed that LS will be contingent on age, A, income in university, Y, in thousands, Score on health inventory in university H. Number of children while in university C. Score on life satisfaction inventory in university LSI. Socioeconomic status of parents SES. Score on spirituality inventory in university SP and income seven years after university, YA in thousands. Use the correlation matrix and the regression output to answer the question. No, so how many variables? Say nine. 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 And which one is the dependent? L So let's, let's from the matrix identify two potentially good predictors. So potentially good predictors, yes. Zero point four eight. Is that a predictor? Mm. 
the independent L S I. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. So, mention the variable first. You think correlation coefficient. So, the good test. Uh -huh. yeah, the question is still showing. So, come. It's a network. Can I ask a question now? No, please. No, please. I say come. No, please. Oh, yeah. okay. I'm That's still not come. It's showing now. So give me the good predictors. L S I. So L S I. So LSI, then you put it to bracket. Zero point four eight. Uh huh. Why a? Why is zero point four seven? It's a two, so you are done. Now that's why the professor of that I'm putting multicollinear. So you know where to look for your answers. What's the yes, first one? C and S, yes. 0 0.76. So C and S, yes. Uh -huh. H and S, yes. 0 0.75. Okay. Then C and LSI. That is zero point five nine. So I hope the rest you are also look Momo and yes, you are just copy. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yo, what pair of variables is the least correlated? Which pair? Which pair? So only one. Uh -huh. Which pair of variables is the least correlated? Yeah. 
A and S P negative zero point zero six. Is it correct? Put there on me, put that. Seven zero point zero five. Ah, where is that? Between what and what? Seven text boxes come, but it's in the LS column, so I don't know if it's part. Ah, they say pairs of uh, that are least correlated, so everywhere. Say, so, but the box is covering. Covering that side. So it's, so it's L S and L S I. Yeah, L S F S C L S and C. So yeah, I'm going to talk about now. Want to share why? If you take your time, you get all correct. If you don't take your time, you get all wrong. But. At me, a simple research methods there. Life of Ben Crane. <laughs> Hello, Steve. Steve, I think you can stop recording now. Um, good evening, everyone. Please, the TA is facing some.